Hello and welcome to another episode of my Facts and Glitches series, where I showcase more of what I've learned about GTA 5 in my over 8,500 hours of speedrunning the game and from my awesome viewers. The Mission 3's company has a very cool glitch that I'm surprised I didn't know of before. When you regain control of Michael who is rappelled down the side of the building, if you rapidly tap your weapon as opposed to holding it, you'll be given momentum. This can enable you to literally float through the building. There does not seem to be any limit as to how far you can go. While your rope physically appears tethered to the helicopter above, it doesn't actually do anything and so will stretch as far as you go. Even better, you don't need to go into the building, you can float away from it. I flew as far as Franklin who was sniping to give Michael cover. At the end of the mission card Libre, Trevor drives away with Michael and Patricia to go into hiding and you are forced to switch to Franklin. However, if you use Franklin to return to your previous location, Trevor and Patricia will be gone and Michael will be driving around by himself. Hey man, weird seeing you here. Can we go get a drink or something? I can't right now, dude. See you soon then, man. Prostitutes, like everyone else, are vulnerable to tasers. What? Oh, you trying to roll on me, fool? Citizens report a 245 on a... However, this changes if someone has recently partaken in their services. Can we go somewhere a bit more yeah. private? Hello there. That was amazing. Bitch ass punk. Hey, let's do this thing! Hey, what's up, baby? Hello! Characters in single player can drink through facial coverings. Man, that was just what I needed. On the mission The Third Way, there is an achievement for killing Stretch with a melee attack. For some reason, Rockstar made it so you literally cannot melee him with a gun, only your fists and specifically melee weapons. Cold, fool. You want clap this fool? Shady motherfucker. Uh, oh yeah, it's on. Lamar, Franklin, they ain't shit. You ain't clapping me. Snit. At the end of the mission The Third Way, it is possible to create a copy of Devon Weston's unique car. Simply drive to the nearest mechanics, make a modification, then head to the impound lot after the mission. The game will consider you to have abandoned a car that you own, thus will present you with a copy. On the mission hood safari, Franklin Lamar and Trevor are in a drug deal gone wrong and flee from the cops. Many are likely unaware that if you follow Lamar, you'll be tasked with defending him from the police and then taking him to his home. Hey, weird dude, let's get out of here. Kid, follow me, all right? I'll get us out of this. Let's find a ride, homie. Interestingly, even after you lose the police, Lamar doesn't lose his bloodlust. He will attack and kill any cop he sees, and you will not even get a wanted level for it.
Now I'll jump out right here. Later on, crazy dude. See ya. On the mission deep inside, Franklin is tasked with stealing the JB700. If you want a copy of this rare car to appear in your impound lot, you unfortunately can't use the mechanics to take ownership of it as they are unavailable during the mission. However, if you drive into Franklin's garage, even for a few moments, the game considers you to own the car and further, that you abandon it once you give it to Devin Weston at the end of the mission. You can then go to the impound lot and find the car waiting. This overpass near the harbour is quite bugged. During prologue, Michael, Brad and Trevor flee in a vehicle that creates tire marks in the snow. Later in the game, during Bury the Hatchet, when Michael goes back 9 years after the events of prologue, these same marks can still be found. At this location, for whatever reason, there is a peculiar water formation. The wacky, wavy, inflatable tube man outside of Simeon's lot is surprisingly interactable. At the start of the obvious big score heist, you can get into the front of Trevor's car. Rather than insulting you, he will still take off, causing you to ragdoll, but not fall out of the vehicle. He will then take you on a merry little adventure, going to wherever he's meant to go in the mission, until unfortunately, the game fails you for abandoning the heist. At the Yellow Jack Inn, there is a very strange coffee maker. Regardless of how you throw a grenade, the grenade you throw will still have the pin in it. While in a car, you don't even pretend to pull the pin. When you slow things down, at least when you're not in a car, you do actually pull a pin, so I don't know why there's still a pin in the grenade. The gate at Michael's home is exceptionally powerful to the extent that it can phase through matter.
On the mission Predator, while I have previously shown that the O'Neills and their vehicle are invulnerable, I did not show that throwing a Molotov at the vehicle will cause the O'Neills to jump out despite their invulnerability. Even though the O'Neills have jumped out, the vehicle itself will continue along its predetermined path until it gets to the cutscene where the O'Neills will magically respawn back into the vehicle. Fucking hell! Hell! Shit, shit, shit! If you place the purple line correctly, it is possible to taxi inside of the toll gate at the far side of Fort Senkudo. Go. I'll get you there fast. Fuck. North. Shit. Where you headed, homie? And so that ends the episode, thank you for watching. You know, I read in the comments section of the previous video, someone said, Hey, I'm surprised that Dark Viper hasn't run out of Out of Bounds yet. Well I have. I no longer have any Out of Bounds to use for my intros and outros. So if you have any, feel free to add them to my Facts and Glitches Discord. Or really if you have any Facts and Glitches, feel free to add them to my Discord. I hope you're all doing well.